So in this video, I want to talk about the relationship between Belle and Hestia. And this is going to be a continuous series on the channel where I discuss about the relationships between different characters. I want to be very clear here before I get into this video that I am a very, very, very big fan of the Dalmanchi series, not just from the anime's perspective, but also the light novel. I have read the light novels multiple times. I have the light novels. And I'm a big fan of the series. So I want to be very clear on outlining that because I feel like sometimes, and it's not all, most of you are super chill, but there's always that one, less than 1% that come into a video and think any form of criticism on a character is somehow me saying the whole series is bad. So I just want to be very clear, highlight that before we get into the meat and potato of this video. And also, no spoilers will be in this video. I will be saving the good videos for when the stuff comes up for season five. So have a good journey because we've got some amazing topics to cover. Like for example, Freya is misunderstood. That's the title that I'll be probably putting at a later date. But the thing I want to talk about with Hestia is as a character, I actually find her to be very selfish. I actually kind of feel like sometimes Hestia reminds me of some parts of the Darmanchi community and also the writer. And the reason why I say that is because Belle in itself in the story, even in the anime to some degree, and I did see a comment that was really good that I agree with, and I'll get into that, but in the light novel, Belle's entire objective is to catch up to eyes to be by her side. Like, he wants to be by her side as an equal. And one of the comments that I saw was someone saying that they feel that the anime does a very bad job at portraying that and it makes it seem like Belle has all these other objectives. Now, does Belle help the Xenos? Yes, but that's because they needed help at the time. His main objective in life is to catch eyes. There are side objectives that come up every now and again, but those are because those things pop up and he wants to do the right thing. But his main and primary goal in life is to catch eyes to be by her side because he's in love with her. He's in love with her and only her. Welf, his best friend, points this out in the light novels. Now, that part of the story has already come and gone. The anime doesn't really go into much detail of it compared to what the light novel does. That's always going to happen, and that's why I want to explain it. Welf, in the recent episode of Darmanchi, basically says to Belle, hey, you need to tell these girls how you really feel. Stop leading them on. Stop being wishy-washy about it. I'm kind of somewhat paraphrasing him. But he's basically saying, Belle, you need to be definitive on your answer. Tell them what you feel and be more concrete about it rather than kind of running away from your problems every time a girl confesses their feelings to you you suddenly run away to the dungeon or whatever you're gonna do i'm kind of adding my little two cents in there and not telling them how you feel wealth in a roundabout way is saying that to bell saying hey tell them how you feel i'm adding a couple of extra little things i know i'm, I'm a bad boy spank me please please be fair though <laughs> And so Belle takes that on board and then tells Sia, who if you've watched the anime already now, you'll know roughly who that is, and I'll be going into more detail on that soon, but basically says, yeah, sorry, I'm not in love with you. Rejects her. Doesn't take it particularly well, but that's the thing. Belle has now stood his ground and says, no, I'm not in love with you. I'm in love with eyes in his mind. That is good. But... The issue that I have is that sometimes fans see that and go, oh, but it's going to be a harem. Now, the only reason why I really say that I want the anime to be a harem is because I kind of get annoyed with the writer and that the writer, I feel like, is having an identity crisis and the writer and Hestia are very similar. They're going against Belle's wishes in the story because Belle is in love with eyes and the writer is very clear on outlining that objective as the end game but the problem is is that the story focuses too much on the harem aspect of all these other girls being in love with him while he's trying to pursue eyes now the anime doesn't do a great job all the time at showing that that his is his main objective in life is to chase eyes and it kind of adds in a bunch of other stuff it makes it feel like that that's what Belle's other objectives are his main objectives is other stuff they're like side quests it's like being slightly distracted while he's going through the main story and picking up a couple of side quests on the side but it makes the story in the anime makes it seem like those are part of the main story when they're kind of not and i do like that comment that i saw now hestia 
is very similar in that aspect because she is constantly there to roadblock and she is more annoying in the anime than anything else which is why it's always a running joke now more so in this season that JC staff are going to have a really hard time doing this season because oh no Hestia isn't going to be the center of attention for a while. A little bit of a hint there, she is going to have her moment to shine. But she has always been a fawn in Bell's side when it comes to his pursuing of eyes because she's always trying to stop eyes and Bell getting together or getting closer. And even other girls, she is constantly there to roadblock. But in my opinion, she is the worst romantic partner that Bell could ever have. Sure, she's got amazing melons and they bounce around and the physics on them don't make any sense, but I don't care because they're just amazing. They're like balls of joy, of love and affection that I want to put my head between. And oh my god, I'm betraying you, Freya. Please forgive me. Don't hurt me. I have sinned, and I will now go back to church and confess my sins to the Lord and Saviour that is Freya. But what I'm getting across is that Hestia has done more damage to Belle's objective in life than anyone else. Not other than the writer themselves. And... Hestia is in love with Belle, but in a very different way, and that is something that is pointed out in the anime, is that her feelings towards Belle are very different than just normal love. It's almost like a motherly kind of thing, but she's overprotective. And by, by doing that, it just, to me, limits the potential of other po romances that need to be built getting built. Now, that isn't to say that in the recent volumes that maybe the writer finally does start to build out Eyes and Bell's romance. I've been told that in the newest volume that will be the case, and I will be reading it, and I will be analysing it, so stick around for that when it does come out. But, I want the writer to stop putting in annoying, unnecessary roadblocks and focus on the romance that is most important. That doesn't mean that I don't mind story elements like Freya and Sia and all of those, because they add a lot of complexity to those characters and also Belle's journey. But what annoys me is when Hestia kind of keeps being that sort of almost Team Rocket kind of situation where she's just always there to be annoying. It's funny for a couple of times until it just becomes too repetitive to the point where I want to kick her down a flight of stairs and just see those bubbly wobblies go wobbly wobbly. She's just annoying at this point. And I wish she would kind of realize and understand Belle's actual feelings. And that's what I mean. She's very selfish because she's trying to stop Belle from being happy all because of her own personal feelings, knowing that they can never do anything beyond what would be required of a proper proper relationship. Like, Belle and Eyes will get together, they'll do the fun fun, and they'll have children. Whoa, I just told you the birds and the bees in less than 10 seconds. Hesty and him can't really do that. I don't know if you can have children with gods, gods and goddesses. I don't know, I've never really checked that up. Maybe I should check that in the story or not. But... To me, I would just say that's a no-no. Like, imagine Hestia and Belle having a child, even if that was possible. The other gods and goddesses would probably have a mental breakdown. And on top of that, even if even if that isn't if if that isn't possible, then what's the point of the, the, that relationship stops at it what it is? Now, I'm not saying everything's about getting it on and the jiggly legalies, but what I'm saying is that many of the components of their relationship don't ever go beyond that. And Hestia is still not really romantically interested him in that way. It's, again, a possessive, motherly kind of thing. Belle desires something more. A companion that can spend the rest of his mortal life with. Not him get old and withered and Hestia kind of just be there. Like, I'm sure it would be cute and nice, but she could still kind of do that without impeding on his personal romance. She could be that motherly caring figure that nurtures him and encourages him to actually pursue proper relationships in a healthy manner. But instead, she's just roadblocking it because she's just being selfish and greedy. That's the point that I'm getting across, is that she could still have her cake... It's just she doesn't want anyone else to have a bit of the slice of that cake as well. And she doesn't. She can't even technically have all of that cake. And that's the issue. Is I just came up with that analogy right on, as I'm recording this. Is that it's basically this. She can only have one-tenth of that cake because of who she is. Let's say one-fourth. Let's be generous. She can only have one-fourth of that cake. 
And that's her limit. She cannot go beyond that one fourth. But instead of allowing other people to have the other three fourths, she used to say, no, I'm going to let it rot away. Because I don't want anyone else to be able to enjoy Belle and ha be by his side. That's just selfish. Now, I do think that's a very interesting way to look at it from a story's perspective. And I do hope that the writer delves into that more from a story element. But my concern is, is that it will be more used as a punchline for the rest of eternity. I hope I'm wrong. Because when I see how Freya and Sia have been developed as characters, especially in those these volumes that are getting covered in Season 5 of the anime, the Goddess of Fertility arc, that is very well done. I just feel like some people don't understand who she is as a character because people just look at it from a basic level of what is done and what ha is going to happen. Now again, I'm not spoiling, but and I will be talking about that in more detail, but what I'm trying to get across is that I feel like other god gods and goddesses get far more better development even in the light novels than Hestia because Hestia feels like she's just there to be a roadblock. I kind of want that to slow down. It doesn't mean that she can't still be a little bit of an overprotective mother, but I would like it to be toned down a little bit. I'd like her to start accepting Belle's wishes, much like the anime community when it comes to Belle, and much like the writer who seems to be still having an identity crisis on what he's trying to do, where he keeps building a harem out, but then it's like, hey, by the way, let me leave these hints here that they're still going to get together. It's like, bro, 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 pick a lane and stick to it. Either pick the harem route or pick the eyes route. You can't have your cake and eat it too. It, that, that's why I said what I said in my last video where I kind of just want it to be a harem at this point because I just want him to pick a lane and I want him to stick to it. And I know that's a controversial opinion, but it is what it is. It is what it is. At the end of the day, Freya's best girl and none of your opinions matter because I'm right, you're wrong, I'm just joking. No, I'm not, not really. But hey, leave a like, subscribe, and enjoy some more Dumb Archie content. Because I like stirring the pot. And I'm probably riled half of you up going, Friday's not best girl. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because I'm right and you're wrong.